The testing of the antennas I recently built were carried out with this UHF aerial analyzer which was uh, designed by Jim Tregellis and published in the Wireless Institute Amateur Radio Journal for June 2006. It's a very simple design using a bridge. It has a number of Schottky diodes which sense the voltages across the bridge. Uh, it gives you an output for standing wave ratio, resistance and the ability to set full scale deflection. The source of uh, signal for the bridge is, uh, in my case, I just use a small handheld transceiver. You require anything from about a quarter of a watt up to two watts. And that works quite nicely. The, uh, the circuit is simple and it's reliable. Uh, I've used a number of commercial analyzers before I use this and I, I find this is, uh, is superior to any of them. Uh, the ones with uh, low cost SMA connectors uh, you need various adapters and uh, there's others that you have to keep resetting for each reading. This is straightforward. You just simply plug your load in, set your, uh, attach your rig, fire away and you've got your answer very quickly. And also the adjustment, as you adjust the antenna, it's very quick to see on the analog meter. So I'm extremely happy with it and I would recommend it. Total cost is not very high. In uh, Jim's article, he uh, shows a simple circuit board that you can make. I use the type N connector and that works well up to 500 megs. I've compared this uh, bridge to much better uh, uh, laboratory type instruments and I, I find it's I can't fault it. The RF input comes through this BNC connector it doesn't matter too much but this this connector connected to the bridge is important I would always recommend the type N. Uh, there's the circuit board layout um, there's two versions there, a VHF and a UHF. I just went straight for the UHF version. Here's a quick inside the case. A small circuit board, a potentiometer switch in the back of the meter. Over here there's a 20 dB uh, attenuator and it's meant to handle 20 watts. The idea of that attenuator built onto the case is if you have a a mobile rig that's putting out 20 watts or whatever you can uh, drop the level down to 2 watts so that the the bridge itself can can handle the uh, the power I'll zoom down onto the circuit board and you can have a bit of a look at that it's uh, pretty basic as I said you can uh, build it very simply it doesn't cost a lot of money without the meter and the case you you're probably not looking at more than about 10 15 dollars really it's uh, much cheaper than a commercial unit and I'm extremely happy with its performance. I used the drawings in the article to make the meter face and also this scale which I printed on a um, silver lamination. It's actually transparent material and then uh, laminated in a silver pouch. I'll just go in a little bit closer to that so you can have a closer look. There we go. The uh, attenuator is on the side, as you can see here, it's marked 20 watts maximum. And there's a close-up look of the uh, scale. It's a good idea to use the, the larger meter. I find the display on this uh, analyzer is very good. I can see the uh, changes in SWR as I adjust the antenna out in bright sunlight. Unlike some of the commercial units with, with LCD displays or TFT meters, very hard to see. On this display, it's quite easy. I can also attach the analyzer to the bottom of a boom on a VHF antenna, feed it from the shack coax, and connect it direct, very close to the driven element. From the ground, I can see the scale using a simple pair of binoculars. It's something I can't do with some of the commercial analyzers with small LCD or TFT displays. The other advantage is that the needle moves quite quickly, so as you're adjusting something, you get a very quick response. Some of the analyzers I've used often uh, need a reset, and uh, if the analyzer's up on the antenna, you have to bring it down and reset it and start all over again. This, this instrument this requires no resets, very simple, and, and, and responds very quickly. So in operation, staying on the meter, I'll, um, I'll set it to uh, full scale deflection. You can adjust that with a knob. SWR, that's it there, and there's the resistance. I'm using a small dummy load I made, 
So there's a view of the dummy load, which is on a Type N connector. It's uh, some SMD resistors. Got to make sure there's very little reactance if you're going to make sure the instrument uh, is correctly calibrated. So using that dummy load, I was able to set it up quite accurately. I do have uh, professional loads, and I've checked them as well, and the, and the meters uh, uh, also been uh, checked against them. So uh, there's a view of the dummy of the attenuator input and output. You can use it either way, depending what sort of connectors you've got. I use the BNC to BNC and the PL there, but it can go the other way with it. This particular attenuator I measured at 15.8 dB. It's just using ordinary resistors, so it's not much good uh, up in the higher VHF area, but it's good enough for uh, what, I'm, what I wanted to do. For a UHF, you probably need a thick film uh, attenuator or something like that.